Okay, I'm back with the Bockingford paper, which is curling up because I spritzed the back with water, and the Pritt paint set. Actually, I'm just going to spritz the front of this page too, to make it just chill out a little bit. Right, now, the poor brush. This yellow is not very yellow, it's like more mustardy. That might be because when I sprayed the pan, maybe some of the green got into it, I don't know. But it's not a very bright, vibrant yellow. Let me give it a wipe. Just to clean off anything that might have gotten in there. And try again. Some clean water on it. It's still quite dull, I don't know. You can see it better on this paper. Anyway, even on this paper, which is sized and proper watercolor paper, this brush just, I can see it damaging the surface of the paper as I work. So as you can see immediately when I put down the color, it starts bleeding into the yellow. That's because this paper is sized properly. So all your paint doesn't immediately just sink in and disappear. dripped in the right place. Let's try and blend this a little. Ugh, the finish on this paint is not great. I think that's as good as we're going to get it. Now the mid-range brush. Let's see if this yellow is still mustardy. Yeah, it still is. This yellow is not great. I'm seeing it for the first time properly on this paper, which is another indicator of how important using the right paper is. I have cleaned out the yellow and it's still making this mustardy color. It's like a queasy kind of yellow. Let's go for the red. Already blending a lot more easily, a lot more easily on this paper. I'm actually not even gonna do too much more. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water and let it do its thing. Now the blue. Just gonna wet down this edge a little. So much easier painting on this paper. Bockingford's a really nice mid-range paper. If you want to dip your toes into trying out fancier paper, maybe start with a Bockingford. It's much more affordable than some of the other ones and it handles decently. I actually really enjoy working with this paper. It's blendy, blendy. These colors are so muddy and unpleasant to work with honestly. They're okay when they're wet. Oops, we got spillage. Oh, 
we got a jumping spider on the desk. Okay, so um, <laughs> this page, um, the paint has run around the edge, but I'm actually just going to leave that because it kind of looks nice. <laughs> I just want to see what it does when it dries. Now, the nice brush. Start with yellow. Yep, still mustardy. This red is quite chalky. But again, getting little fingers of paint blending into the yellow much more so than with the other papers that I've used. I'm trying not to add too much water because that can actually, I mean, then you get stuff like this going on, but it is a little bit difficult to work with this paint. I mean, I do these videos and I do teach beginners classes, but by no means am I the be all and end all top most experienced watercolorist. I'm also still learning, even years after I've started, I feel like you are never too advanced to learn something. And every time you do a painting, you will definitely learn something new. You will get more acquainted with the paint you're using, the brush you're using, the paper you're working on. It's like a continuous learning experience. So, you know, don't feel dumb for asking questions, even if you have been painting for a while. Because I look up beginners watercolor tutorials on YouTube all the time. And without fail, every single time I watch one of those videos, I will learn something or at least be reminded of something that I'd forgotten about that is useful knowledge to have. So yeah, I just never stop learning. I have to say these paints do look a bit more vibrant on this paper compared to the other ones that I've used. This is very interesting. This bucking fur does have a habit of buckling quite a lot in my experience. Despite being 300 grams, it buckles even more than the Cass Arts wood pulp. Now the Cotman's. Cadmium yellow. The paper is buckling quite a lot, so you'll just have to excuse me if the washes don't end up um, performing quite like we want them to. Let me just spritz the back of the paper again. In cases like these where you're doing washes on a thinnish paper, taping or stretching your paper beforehand will be useful to you. No, wow, this red is so bright on this paper. Just another cat here. Some water, do some blending. Once again, the paper surface is not enjoying the attention from this brush, but it is working. And the paint is actually flowing together more. Now, the phthalo blue. Okay, so I'm just wetting these edges and trying to blend this a little bit more difficult with this brush as usual. And destroying the surface of the paper with the stiff bristles. But nevertheless, I guess some kind of blending is happening. Okay, I guess that's good enough. Now, mid-range brush. This is sort of a comfortable representation of how I usually paint. I usually use mid-range brushes 
with mid-range to slightly high-end paper. It doesn't feel like I'm wasting super, super expensive paper for just practicing and playing and not using my sable brushes for stuff like this. But I do tend to use the better paints while I'm at home. When I'm out traveling, I tend to use the Cotman's more, but um, at home, I have my Schmenke and my Daniel Smith sort of hanging out on my desk, so I just reach for those and then um, squeeze out whatever I need and then re-wet the palettes and work from paint that's already there and out. I don't rinse all the paint off my palettes each time I'm done. I actually, you know, like, for example, this was for a wedding portrait that I did and I've just been keeping this paint around because you can easily just spritz that with water and reuse it. There's no reason to waste a bunch of paint every time you start a new painting. Already the blending is made way easier with this brush. Gotta be careful of that section there though. Otherwise that is just gonna bleed right into this block. Just paint around it. <laughs> but I do want it to blend so I guess this is good enough it is blending I mean okay I will accept this maybe just put in a little bit right here yeah that'll work Yep, and I need a new paint rag already. That's why a cloth one is better, because you don't have to keep carrying fresh pieces of roller towel the whole time, because they get saturated with paint super fast. Oops, and we've got this running into here a little bit too much. That makes me feel a little bit more secure about that. <laughs> that paint drip threatening my block. Okay, now we have another dip in the page here, so the yellow is probably going to run into the other colors quite a bit. Um, the good brush, cadmium yellow. This brush is a little bit small for what I wanted to do. But it still works because it is natural bristle and it picks up so much water and pigment. This blue just keeps wanting to take over the red because of this dip. The both the blue and the yellow are trying to run into the red bit. So I think I'm just gonna put on some more red. Even if it blends a little, that's okay. At least we'll have the approximation of it. Oh, it's 
good enough. Let's continue on, shall we? The light has changed a little bit. Um, since I don't have studio lights really or anything, I work with a natural light from the window. And um, quite some time has passed since I started this video, so the light will look a bit different. Sorry about that if it's messing with you. Let me just press this again. But we are almost done. So now we're on Daniel Smith on the Bocking Food Paper. Time for the crappy brush. Right, Mayan yellow. Hmm, I think I need a bit more paint. Then, pearl red. Immediately also starts blending in. Can you see that? Much better than the other papers. Once again paper surface not enjoying the stiff bristles of this brush. I think this blending is okay so I'm gonna just leave this. Now, the phthalo blue. Wow, it's so nice and vibrant on this paper. Okay, so it's very difficult for me to blend with this brush. As you can see, there's a dip here and all the paint keeps running into it. I try to fix it, but it's a bit difficult. This bocking food buckles like crazy, but the finish and the vibrancy of it is so nice. So when I work on bocking food, I tend to not use big flat washes like this. I will do more things like like the pet portraits that I do where I work with small areas of color at a time and fairly dry brush so that I don't get all this puddling and buckling going on. Now the mid-range brush, Mayan yellow. <laughs> yep, it's going right back into that dip. But I do think um, overall the bottom line of this experiment is clear. Using good paper makes a difference, using a bit of brush makes a difference, and using good paint makes a difference. Parallel red. Blend, please. Looking good already, but I know Oops, cat hair. If you have cats, it's impossible to escape the cat hair. It just infiltrates your whole home. The air in this house is probably about 90% cat hair. We do clean and everything, but like <laughs> any cat owner will be able to tell you it gets into your laundry and it basically just sticks and sticks. Oh, we got some contamination here. That's another thing you wouldn't be able to do on cheaper paper is lift up color like that. Once again, that's the sizing helping you do that. Whew. Hills and valleys. See, this is what I mean by you can ask the watercolor nicely, but at the end of the day, it just kind of does what it wants. Not always a bad thing. Sometimes it's really nice to have an unpredictable element in your work. Okay, I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it. Now I'm just going to add some more yellow back in here in this block. And I'm cheating with a good brush, but <laughs> at this point, who cares? So, good brush. Mayan yellow, let's go. It's a little bit small once again. Every time I switch over from this, this size 6 to the size 4, I'm struck by how insufficient a four is to paint a wash at the speed of which I want to paint it and the size that I want to paint it. That's why it's good having different kinds of brushes for different applications in your arsenal. Demonetized for saying arsenal. I don't want to add too much water because the paper is so buckly that it just it's just gonna run. So let me do the blue now. It's 
looking very McCoy-esque on this page. Oops, color contamination. Incidentally, this is a good way to make clouds if you're painting a sky wash. You paint your wash and you get yourself some tissue paper, um, preferably untextured unless you want dots in your clouds. Um, and not cotton wool because that leaves behind fibers. So just a normal facial tissue and you press it down on the paper into the wet wash and it'll lift up the color and create some nice cloud shapes for you. And you can soften the edges or add more or put paint back or whatever you want to do. A lot of fun. It's one of the things I teach in my beginners classes. And it really, it never gets old. <laughs> I get a little thrill every time I employ that method and I get clouds, it's like exciting. <laughs> I've got to put this yellow back. I guess that's good enough. Okay, so that was the Daniel Smith. Now, onto the Schminke. Chromium yellow hue. See how nice and buttery and vibrant this yellow is. Oops, cut here. This is the yellow that I use in my beginners workshops as well. Beautiful color. Now, the Perlene Dark Red. Again, immediately more willing to blend with the yellow. As soon as I lay it down, start sticking little fingers into the other wash next to it. Apologies for being off camera there, but hopefully you don't feel too cheated. We know that brush doesn't perform great by now. <laughs> okay, so mid-range brush, chromium yellow, beautiful rich yellow. It's almost like a cross between the lemon yellow and new gamboge, which was also a beautiful yellow and can be used quite effectively in a limited color palette. Um, to mix a wide range of colors. Because I get the paint on faster, I think, with this brush as well, is why it's easier to blend. With this other cheapy brush, I'm spending so much time, you know, it's like nanoseconds, but it makes a difference. If the air is dry like it is right now, and it's summer and it's warm, your paint will dry faster. And even in the little split second that it's taken, you longer to get paint onto your brush and get it back to the paper. The edges of your paint on the paper have already dried or dried sufficiently for it to be difficult to blend it in. So everything really does make a difference. It all just depends on what you want to achieve with your work. The variables in watercolor, just it's such a beautiful medium to work with. Okay, that looks fairly blended. Now, the nice brush. Chromium yellow. And now, the Perlene dark red. Once again, because the paint doesn't take so long to load onto the brush, blending this wet, wet paint is fairly easy. Wet on wet, I mean. But this is all stuff that you'll sort of figure out as you play with watercolors, you know, what, which colors behave in which ways, which papers behave in which ways, what color mixes are the best. And of course, educating yourself online is never a bad idea. There are some things I've learned about paint that I would have never known, even with years of experience playing with watercolors and practicing and whatever. Even after years of doing that, I wouldn't have known many of the things that I learned online from other YouTubers and from uh, reading articles. 
If you're into the science behind pigments and paints, um, the Spin Doctor is a good channel to look at. I've linked him in the description below if you want to check him out. Dr. Otto Kono is another really, really informative and interesting channel to watch. She also discusses the science behind paint quite often and she does very, very thorough color reviews and pigment reviews. Really enjoying her content. And uh, actually became a patron because her content is that valuable to me. Okay, so we are done with the bocking food. And you can already see even the prit looks better on this page. Now I'm going to set this aside to dry quickly have my lunch and then I'll be back with the Saunders Waterford 638 gram paper.